Well, uh, thank you very much for having us here today. Uh, I'm Mikhail, and I'm a PhD student in biological engineering here at MIT. And I'm Vivek Murthy. I'm a physician at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Mikhail and I are here today to tell you about Epernicus, which is a professional networking platform for researchers. We started this effort in order to give scientists a way to search for specific materials and expertise in their scientific network. Now, Mikhail and I spent a number of years in lab, and during that time, we spent a lot of time looking for things. We always prefer to find what we needed within our lab, but we didn't always find what we needed in that place. So we found ourselves looking for a tool that would let us search through our departments, search through our institutions, and even our lab alumni networks to find very specific materials when we needed them. What we're going to show you in the next few minutes is how we went about creating Epernicus to serve this need. We'll show you how scientists are searching through their scientific networks to find very specific expertise and very specific equipment and reagents. We'll also show you how scientists are using Epernicus to create a professional space for themselves on the web. And it's also allowing them to connect to their colleagues. So <clears throat> um, let's say I'm looking for somebody in my scientific network who has expertise with neural stem cells. What I can do is uh, go to Epernicus and sign in here. Um, and on my Pernicus dashboard in the search box, I can type in neural stem cells and I can click search. And Epernicus shows me all the people who are on Epernicus and specifically the people who are in my scientific network who have neural stem cells as an area of expertise. And the, the way that's identified is because they've listed it in their profile as a topic, method, or material. Uh, that they have experience with, or it shows up in the abstracts of their papers, posters, and presentations. And when I browse through this list, because these are people who are connected to me in my real-world scientific network, I can recognize most of the names and faces that appear here, and I can see how people are connected to me. So Mikhail is connected to me because we're in the same institution and we're also friends, and other people are connected to me because we're part of the same laboratory or part of the same department. And what I can do is I can click on Mikhail, and I can see his profile, and I can find out more about more specifics about his expertise. Um, I can also see, uh, you know, interesting information about his scientific genealogy and the lab that he's a part of, and other techniques that he is familiar with. And if I find that he is somebody that I could help me with neural stem cells, then I can contact him directly through Epernicus and uh, get help with the question that I have. Now, one of the things that makes this possible is. Epernicus's recognition of people's real-world scientific networks. And what that means, just to use Mikhail as an example, is that when he signed on and identified what lab, department, and institution he is part of, he was automatically connected to other people who are in the Hayashi lab, uh, people who are in his department, Brain and Cognitive Sciences, people who are part of his institute, the Picower Center at MIT, and to other folks who are <clears throat> at MIT in general, as well as uh, former uh, members uh, of the laboratories that he used to be a, a, a part of. So what Epernicus really lets people do is to search those networks that have 100 years or more of scientific experience for very specific uh, topics, methods, or materials uh, that people can help them with. <clears throat> and the other, uh, one other key aspect of Epernicus is the ability for members to create professional web presence, and Vivek's going to talk about that. So as Mikhail showed you, the individual profiles are professional snapshots of a scientist that allow you to learn about an individual very quickly. We've also cre created public versions of these profiles, which can be viewed by anybody on the web. And I'll show you an example of that. The following is Mikhail's public profile. And as you can see, it captures all the relevant information about him as a scientist. Now, this can be viewed by anyone on the web. And this page also has its own web address or URL. Mikhail can put this URL in his business card. He can put it on his website or anywhere else he wishes. <clears throat> we hope that the tour we've given you so far has given you a flavor for what scientists are doing on Epernicus. Our goal in creating Epernicus was to help scientists find the resources that they need to advance science and also to advance their careers. There are a number of other tools that we've created on Epernicus, which we hope that you will explore when you join the community. And uh, joining me, Perinkus, is really easy. Um, everybody here uh, should receive an invitation from us to join. 
But if you don't, or you have friends who want to join Epernicus, um, it's really easy. You can just go to the Epernicus homepage, epernicus.com, and you can request an invitation. And as long as you are a current or former researcher in the life or health sciences, you'll be invited to Epernicus. You can log on, create a profile, and connect with your um, scientific colleagues. All of your contact information is going to be kept private. We don't share it with any third parties. Um, and we really encourage you to sign on, check it out, and enjoy. Thanks very much.